We have six incoming freshman scholarship athletes. Sort of an interesting class. One girl from Israel graduated high school two years ago, and just coming off of two and a half years of military service. So it's going to take her a while, I think, to, to learn. She's been training as part of her military work, but hasn't been racing. Um, Catherine Malloy is an outstanding freshman from Holy Names, New York State. Amanda Rickett was a state champion from Delaware. So we have a, a good, solid freshman class and a good upper class, um, but it's going to be a different dynamic. We graduated Jillian King, who was an outstanding front runner for us. Leave Westfall uh, had a great summer. She finished fifth in the European Under-23 5,000 meter championship, uh, representing France. Uh, Morgan Mueller qualified for the NCAA 3,000 meter steeplechase this past spring. Maddie Davidson, who transferred in last year from Louisville, ran 1635 for 5,000 meters. So we're pretty solid up front, um, and the freshmen will, will grow. But it's, I think it's going to be a transition in the sense that it's not going to be a, a team that comes together until maybe the ACC, which is when you want to start to race anyway. This past weekend, we had an exhibition, sort of non-scoring competition at Bryant. So I sat our top four runners out because you really need to develop one through eight. Top seven is your varsity, top five score. We're pretty set one through four, so I was able to give them a good training session on Friday. But this weekend at UMass Amherst, we, we open up and everybody will race and we'll see where we are. <clears throat> and two weeks prior to our big invitational, and that invitational on Friday the 27th I think is huge. Uh, on the 14 men's teams and 14 women's teams, but on the women's side, probably have the top two ranked teams in the country, Oregon and Providence. Probably six or seven, I think, will be Cornell. We're currently ranked 25th in the country. We may very well have five of the top 20 ranked teams in the nation in that competition. So it's great for the city of Boston. I think I know there's going to be a lot of people coming out to watch that. It's going to attract a lot of the media. It's, it's a great event, and we're really excited about that. You said that uh, one of the goals is to get the team to mesh towards the middle of the season. Do you have any other team goals that you're <coughs> hoping to accomplish during the season? Every year we go into the ACC. We try to be in the top half of the ACC conference in, in the fall. We try to get into the top four of the NCAA region, and we try to qualify for the NCAA. We've qualified for the NCAA championships now three straight years. We've been top 20, I believe, three straight years. Uh, so they're a good, solid team. They do very well at the national level. Um, and you know, you know, basically, you want to keep getting to the NCAA championships so you can give, the, especially those freshmen every year, the opportunity to experience um, running at the very top level within the country. And, you know, women's cross country has blossomed over the last seven to ten years. More scholarship opportunities, and the teams are very, very, very competitive. So it's um, it's a very simple sport. You know, football is a three-hour match, and soccer might be a two-hour match. And cross country, you line them up, you fire the gun. Twenty minutes later, you put them on the bus and you go home. You know, it's sort of neat that way, but it's nonstop. I tell the kids <clears throat> they probably could not pick a more difficult sport than cross country. For this reason, if you're a basketball player, you're on the basketball court and your team is turning the ball over, and you're not hitting, you're not hitting your shots. The coach can make substitutions. The coach can call timeout. There's timeout in football. There's so many seconds between pitches in a baseball game, but in cross country, it's nonstop. So if you get into the middle of a race and things aren't going well, there's no do-overs. There's no timeouts. Or in the like my my golf game, there's no mulligans. You know, you can't do it all over again. You have to. You have to stay the course. So it's, um, it's unique that way. And uh, the kids are pretty tough mentally. And it's a very emotional sport. And um, you know the kids work hard. And uh, it's, it's great. They have great chemistry. And it's a lot of fun working with these kids. Is there anything else you'd like to add about as we look forward to this upcoming season? You just want to continue to, to, to provide an environment. I think a, a big part of our job as coaches is to help maximize the welfare of each individual to give them an environment that they can truly cherish their four-year experience. I think they have a lot of fun uh, with the sport. They have great balance academically, athletically, and socially. Boston College teaches these kids to go out into the community and upon their graduation be, you know, extremely valuable members of society. And you know, I, I look beyond wins and losses. I try to prepare these kids any way that I can help for them to be great citizens 
and they do that. And it's a lot of fun and we take a lot of pride in 100% graduation rate and the great things that they do in the community.